Hi, my name is Stuart Jarden. I'm a long-time resident here in Ottawa. In fact, I've been here since 1974. Originally, I come from Dumfries in the southwest of Scotland, and Dumfries is the jewel in the crown as far as Scotland's concerned. Now, you may know Dumfries better for the fact that its most famous resident was Robert Burns. Robert Burns lived there the last years of his life, and he wrote lots of his songs and his poetry while a resident in Dumfries. Now, when my wife and I came here in 1974, we joined and uh, got together with other Scottish uh, members of the community and we helped with different events over the years. Um, we still do, in fact. Uh, one of these groups is the Scottish Society of Ottawa. They're celebrating their 10th anniversary this year and I was one of the founding members. And because it's 10 years and that, they've asked me to do this little video uh, today to give you a little bit of background about one of the other societies in Ottawa here that I'm a member of. That is the St Andrew Society of Ottawa. Now, the St Andrew Society of Ottawa um, was founded in 1846. St Andrew Societies in general uh, in North America have been around probably before that some other ones, uh, possibly on the eastern seaboard of the US for instance. Both Montreal and Toronto have societies uh, and had societies functioning possibly before all or two. Now the aims of the societies is, the their motto in fact is the relief of distress. And basically uh, at that point when they were initially founded what the intention was was to help immigrants from Scotland when they came over here. Now, when an immigrant came over back in those days, uh, the chances are they may even need physical help. They were coming on a boat, hence the expression is just off the boat. Now, uh, sometimes they got into financial difficulties, so that's what the society did. They helped these people out. Uh, sometimes it was in the form of a grant, sometimes it was in the form of a loan. On occasions they even actually managed to, um, for people who wanted to go back home, they managed to get them a passage back home. Now that wasn't the only thing. They didn't just restrict their uh, charitable donations to Scots. They actually supported way back then uh, things like the Ottawa Orphans Home and the Old Men's Home here in Ottawa. But today that that is no longer necessary, that individual help. So the focus today obviously is more on helping other charitable organisations in the city uh, with their endeavours by giving them donations. Now as far as the uh, society being formed back in 1846, it was until 1869 that the society was recognised in the Ontario Legislature with a, a charitable Charter, uh, probably the, the first one possibly in Ontario. Um, the society has had many prominent people in the city here as members, and probably uh, the mayors of Bytown and some of the mayors of Ottawa also have been members. Now, the more famous members are Sir Johnny Macdonald, for instance, who in 1869 joined the society, and he was a member for 25 years. Uh, Thomas McKay, the builder of Rideau Hall and St Andrew's Church downtown, which he gifted to the community, uh, was a member. Uh, Sanford Fleming was a past president of the society. Now, uh, it wasn't until 1933, uh, us Scots being a little behind the ball, I'm afraid, uh, before we ever elected any women to the executive. But in that year, the first woman was elected, and subsequently, um, women were elected to uh, all the positions on the executive, including president. Now, the society continued to function uh, through both world wars, but in 1985, the president at the time ceased to call meetings. Now, there was more than one reason for this. Uh, one of the reasons was, at that time, immigration had changed uh, demographic in the city here as far as Scots were concerned there wasn't the immigration so we weren't getting any younger Scots uh, of any amount coming into the city to renew our numbers 
and the demographic within the, the group itself uh, was all an older group. The other thing is there was, a, um, as being Scots again, I have to say that uh, there was some political dissent within the group as well. Now the society then uh, went into dormancy for 10 years and in 1996 Keith McClellan, who was a former general, a former ambassador for Canada to uh, very many countries, moved into Ottawa and when he realised that the St Andrews Society in Ottawa was no longer functioning, uh, he was disappointed. So he called a meeting, uh, I must say that uh, Keith was also uh, a former president of the Montreal Society, so he knew uh, that he would uh, like to see um, a similar society functioning as well as they did here. So with that aim, he got in touch with different groups and different individuals in the Scottish community here. Uh, that included the likes of the Barnes Club, Sons of Scotland, Cameron Highlanders, Fraser Highlanders, Highland dancing groups, country dancing groups, different individuals uh, within uh, the city who were prominent in the Scottish community. And at that meeting, he asked if there was any chance of being supported in his endeavours to try and resurrect the society. Well, he was quite successful, um, I guess, because he had been a diplomat. He managed to overcome some of the reticence on the part of some of the people who attended the meeting. And it was decided that um, he would call another meeting of all those who actually would support and uh, help him. So at that meeting, we decided uh, that it was a go-ahead. We'd elected a slate of officers and the society is still functioning today. And it's functioning under Hugh Rickey as president of the society and hopefully the society will continue to function for a long time yet. Now, to satisfy any curiosity on the part of anyone who sees this banner behind me, I'll tell you what the origins of that are. That banner was produced by uh, Ford Dumfries for the 200th anniversary of the passing of Robert Burns. To celebrate that, the town decided that they were going to reenact the funeral march uh, of Burns through Dumfries. So they had these banners produced and they hung them all along the uh, funeral route uh, in Dumfries. After that, there was a state dinner and after the state dinner, one of the organisers of the event presented me with this banner as the attendee for Ottawa, and hence we'll have it here today. So, thank you for listening. Goodbye.